right, so welcome to FTI. This is part of our seminar series. It's something we've been doing for a, uh, considering for a long time. We do a lot of seminars um, at organizations um, for free, and uh, this is part of our payback into the industry. We're seeing a growing diaspora of senior business analysts. So it's really to introduce topics that you might not do a course on, you might not do a workshop on, and to try and get the networking going, okay? Uh, it's part of our agenda to push the professionalism of, uh, pr professionalism of business analysis um, across the country. Okay, my topic for tonight uh, is the uh, value-minded business analyst. It's a presentation that I've done in, in uh, about eight or nine times now, but it uh, most recently in India. So I want to share these ideas with you um, about the value-minded business analyst. This is a, uh, a presentation for uh, the senior business analyst. I want to talk about the concept of value. It's one of the, 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 the kind of questions that uh, my staff always hate when I ask them in their performance appraisals, that when they're looking for salary increases, Justify your value. Justify, I'll double your salary if you can show me how you will double the value to the organization, whatever that may be. People don't really understand value. A lot of people say, well, I do my job. That's, you're hiring me for that, okay? So the responsibility for delivering value is on you to define my job description, because then if I do my job description, then you guys, um, you know, automatically we add value. So I need to focus on what business value really means um, so that we don't just become business analysts that do our jobs, okay? Um, we want to... Uh, explore some of the tools and techniques that, uh, that do business value, and we want to understand how to make that business value quantifiable so we can justify things. So if you're a person, a business analyst working in an organization, um, and you're looking to, to, uh, to counter that argument that, that what value do business analysts do, what justification uh, is there for hiring <laughs> business analysts, and how to look at actually turning this into facts and figures. If you're in business and you're writing proposals to generate um, uh, new, new business, new contracts for yourself or your contractor, this is a mechanism for understanding of the value that you add so that you can actually start motivating for higher prices, okay? Value is a very subjective thing. So let's understand um, some, some, uh, some comments as we go. Understanding business value. All right, so let's look at some value concepts. Value is a very simple definition, is just something that adds value to someone. So this is a high general uh, generic statement. But there's, there's, uh, there's insight in each of these things, okay? The first key word is stakeholder. If you're the kind of business analyst that operates in an environment where you've got one user, and the user walks into your environment, and they say, this is what I want, you must write me a requirements document that lays down what I'm gonna tell you in the next five minutes, and by the way, I'm also gonna tell you what the solution looks like, all right? You have to say to yourself, well, you know, what am I doing? And you might actually say, well, just speak to my secretary over there because he or she just does the documentation. I am an analyst and I add a little bit more value to that. So if you're that kind of, that, that kind of person, you only have one stakeholder, it's kind of like what value can you add? You're just a piece of a puzzle in the software development life cycle doing something that the project managers have set out for you. Can you see? It's just doing the job. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about uh, in a few moments time is looking at multiple stakeholders and getting consensus. Okay, the second thing that's, uh, that's in here is goal. All right, and I'm gonna talk a great deal about the difference between solution-oriented people and problem-oriented people. And to bring that home, it was quite interesting, uh, again, coming out of India, the debates that are 40 years old about, there were two, two messages that came out. The first thing is that there's a divide between IT and business. Ho-hum, we've heard that for like 40 years, and we still know closer to solving that. The second thing, of course, was that 60 to 70% of projects fail because requirements is done badly. Ho-hum, we've known that for 40 years. Okay, we seem to be no closer to, 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 to um, reaching the end there. So there's one key thing that has made a difference to some business analysts, and that's focusing on goal achievement. Okay, goal achievement. And I'll talk about the good doctor and bad doctor in a minute or two. All right. The second thing is, it it's something that is meaningful to that stakeholder, something that someone desires or needs. Okay, so I uh, pictured this, if you will, in my days when I used to be a woman. You know, uh, values mean different things to different people. So when I went out to buy my first uh, matric dress, and you know, you walk in, and actually the price is not really that relevant. You see this little black number, and you've just got to have it. You know that burning desire in your heart to get that thing, okay? 10 years later or 20 years later, that thing is still hanging in your cupboard. You can't fit into it anymore, okay? You, you know, um, you've got older, it's not appropriate to the style, and you wouldn't be seen dead in something that actually is that short-skirted, okay? But you keep it in your cupboard, like I do, because it still has memories, it still has value with it, 
Okay, your husband will come along and say, what do you keep? Just throw it away. You never wear that thing, okay? It has no value to him unless he was perhaps your date on that long distance matric dance night. Okay, um, do you understand the difference of different values there? Okay, so um, it's something that the stakeholder desires or needs or, or requires more of, okay? And that's a very subtle, subjective thing. The second thing is we can't always place a monetary value on that, all right? We buy a pair of jeans manufactured with no brand, cost 100 rand. We can buy a very similar pair of jeans, even made by the same manufacturer, but stitched on it, it has a brand name. And we add three or 400 rand to that just because it's a brand name. Can you see? So how do you put monetary value on things which are intangible, okay? And uh, the value that we feel is not necessarily uh, representable in cash terms. 